Welcome. This is your brain on Star Wars. And what I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to blend mythology, brain science, and the movie Star Wars together. The reason I'm doing this is because I teach interpersonal neurobiology at Merrillhurst, and that's about brain science and how the brain interacts with environment. And I teach Journey Through Change, which is about mythology, psychology, history, and religion. So what we're going to do here, and I want you to buckle up for this, <laughs> because this is going to be an experience going through connecting with brain science, Star Wars, and here we go. We're going to start with Joseph Campbell's book. Joseph Campbell, I teach his works in my Journey Through Change class. And Joseph Campbell is a great mythologist. What many people do not know is his book inspired George Lucas on the third draft of Star Wars, The New Hope, to reframe that entire story. The reason is, and the reason he was inspired, I think, is that Joseph Campbell did something really amazing, and this was done in 1948. He looked at countries around the world and throughout history on the myth of the hero and found 240 stories and they were all alike. They all had a similar pattern. How could that be? That's because we all have the same brain, even throughout recorded time. We have the same brain parts. Events may change how we think, but we have the same brain parts. So when we looked at this experience of Joseph Campbell, and you could see that there were three patterns for all heroes. And you could see this right in the Star Wars movie. Every hero departs on a journey. And every hero decides to refuse the call to go on the very journey they're departing. Like Luke Skywalker refuses four times. Ray in The Force Awakens refuses several times. You have to deal with abandonment. You have to deal with loss. Then you also deal with finding your strengths, moving forward, dealing with the challenges, and then going home and teaching what you learn to other people. And then the journey starts again. Now I'm going to contrast this with another pattern. This pattern is from brain science and astronomy. You are looking at a brain cell, a neuron. That's electrical, chemical arrangement. We have 100 trillion neuronal synapses in our brain. In the universe, and these look remarkably similar, isn't that fascinating? In the universe, we have 100 trillion stars estimated by astronomers. So there is this force out there of electrical chemical energy, and there's this force in here. So what we're going to do is take a look at some of the aspects that go on when we experience a movie like Star Wars. First of all, it's mirror neuron pathways get activated. The mirror neuron pathway is the pathway that allows you to experience what others feel. It's an empathy pathway. It's an imitation pathway. So when General Leah cries, you feel sad. If Han Solo gets irritable, you feel that because that's happened to you. It may have happened just this very day. If you hear John Williams and the Darth Vader theme, you know danger is coming. Now, what embeds this in your memory? 
it's a tr neurotransmitter believed to embed this named dopamine. And that is a learning neurotransmitter, a focusing neurotransmitter, and a pleasure neurotransmitter. So when we go to the movies, we remember and Star Wars, who we were with, <laughs> what the line was like, what the theater did when the Death Star blew up in the first movie. There was cheering. If you were in Iowa in a drive-in, they honked their horns. <laughs> Dopamine helps us embed the storytelling. Now the last piece is very fascinating. It's interpersonal neuronal linking. So when we experience a story, we are experiencing it with each other. That is why we have these conversations, did you go see Star Wars? What was that like for you? I want to know what that was like. Really, you felt that way? We are linking through stories. Now, uh, a fascinating experience about linkage is that people link in so many different ways. Here is an example of neuronal linking. This is my niece, Kate, and her partner, Brendan, from Columbus, Ohio. The, Kate considers their relationship a relationship of love based on Star Wars. <laughs> Kate is Chewbacca, Brendan is Han Solo, and she says, we are a lot like the characters. We bicker a little, but love each other a lot. <laughs> now I'm going to transition to a bigger part of the brain and go through the three main brain parts and tie that in with Star Wars. So the first part is the brain stem, and that is at the base of your head. That's called the reptilian brain. You share this with sharks, with frogs, with alligators. Now the brain stem is primarily there as a survival stem getting information uh, from the body to detect fear. That's very important. And it also does one other thing. It regulates your body functions, particularly breathing. So if you remember Darth Vader, he does not breathe naturally. He breathes through the machine. He literally uses, loses his humanity. Then the second part of the brain to form in mammals and also in us is our strong emotional brain that allows for attachment. And it allows for us to experience all sorts of emotions. But again, it primarily is there to detect fear because the, our body is set up for survival. The last part of the brain to form um, humans have the biggest part of this, of all mammals, is that the prefrontal cortex, which gives instructions. It's like a manager of tools and skills on what to do. So I'm going to illustrate this with the brain in the palm of your hand model. Uh, and we're going to do this together. We're going to first be the Darth Vader brain. And this, was, this model I've adapted from Dan Siegel, MD, who wrote The Developing Mind. And he also co-wrote this book, Parenting from the Inside Out, with Mary Hartswell. So here we go, Darth Vader brain. Just put your brain in the palm of your hand. This is your brain stem. You are detecting fear. You cannot breathe through your body. You are breathing through a machine. Your limbic area is here, where your thumb is, and the amygdala is right in the center. 
and you are focused on fear once again. You sense a disturbance in the force. It has to be eliminated. The prefrontal cortex is completely overrun by your emotions, your aggression, your response to fear, and it doesn't, it only reasons with its emotion. It doesn't use logic, so you flip your lid. You wipe out a village. Now, let's do the Jedi. You have the same parts here as Darth Vader. You have the brainstem with fear. You have the limbic area with your emotional center, also primarily detecting fear. But it also allows for relationships. And one of the key things it does is in the limbic area is all the main heroes of Star Wars process and talk about their losses. But on the dark side, if you have losses, you brush by them. You don't process them. If you don't process loss, fear increases. So when you have the prefrontal cortex, top of knuckles, top of the finger fingernails, giving instructions to the limbic area, you are integrated. You don't flip your lid. There are three lessons I think that we can draw from Star Wars. One is fear needs to be managed. If it isn't managed, life is chaotic and very destructive. We will either get very anxious or we will get very angry or violent or aggressive. So one of the key elements in in the Star Wars movie is focusing on a way to regulate that fear. And we see this with Yoda, and this is with belly breathing. And belly breathing calms you down. So I'm going to illustrate a version of belly breathing from Herbert Benson's relaxation response that is easy to do. So if we are breathing in our chest, we are activating the sympathetic nervous system so we get actually more anxious or fearful. And, and what we have to do is learn how to calm down. So one of the things, and this is, a, a, is to put your arms behind the back of your chair. You can do that right now. Put the arms behind the back of your chair. Now let me just briefly explain what, what is happening to you right now as you're doing this. You may start uh, to yawn. You start to relax, and you increase your capacity in your lungs, if you were chest breathing, by 10 times just by doing this and getting air. In addition to that, your stomach holds 90% of your stored serotonin. That's Gershon, the stomach is a second brain. And serotonin is your natural calmness neurotransmitter. It goes through the bloodstream and you calm down. Lesson two, this is Barley. Please say hello to Barley. <laughs> Barley is my daughter's Paige's dog and her husband Ryan's dog. They are very proud owners. Barley is about 15 weeks here as Yoda. He's getting initiated to Star Wars at a very young age with his lightsaber. Now, as we know, if anyone had a puppy, puppies developmentally have difficulty emotionally regulating themselves. <laughs> they get very excitable. And it's a big deal to say stay and stay. It takes patience. It takes practice. And why is that? Because what is happening in the human brain is also happening in the animal brain. That we have a design problem here, according to, and according to Ledoux. And Ledoux is a neuroscientist that shows that our 
Nerve networks are vastly outnumbered with emotional nerves compared to cognitive nerves. So much so, it's hard to find the cognitive nerve to send a message. So one of the important pieces about emotional regulation that is catching on in our culture today and around the world is mindfulness. It's being aware of your thoughts and letting them pass through you. It, another strategy which is so important is the strategy surrounding thinking about how to solve a problem, not just reacting to the problem. And that is so essential with fear, which is a key element in understanding Star Wars, because the dark side is all about moving right into the fear and just honoring it and saying, this is what we're going to be about. We're going to be afraid, and you're an enemy, and we need to get you. Now, there is a constructive way to also discharge. This is from my friend, Holly. This is a very wonderful pre-med student at OSU. And because of all the pressures of studying, he marches around in a Darth Vader suit. And students love it, and he loves it. And they even play the theme song I hear as he's going down the hallway. This is a constructive way to release the anger, the aggression, the fear in you. The final lesson is the force is with you. And in The Force Awakens, Ray discovers things she did not realized she had. She had powers. She had abilities. She only knew herself stuck on this planet, and all of a sudden she realized she had strengths. That is the power of this message. And this is the last slide looking at the Hubble telescope, and this is an actual creation of a star in the Milky Way, and they had labeled this The Force Awakens, December 17 of 2015. And, the, and it almost looks like a lightsaber is going right down in creating of the star. We have the ability to create with insight, with repairing attachment, with strategizing, and that concludes my presentation, Your Brain on Star Wars. May the force be with you. <laughs>